Hey, what's up? It's Cody with Blood Money MMA Bets, and I'm back for my second UFC breakdown card. Um, I'm going to break down UFC Fight Night Tiago Santos versus Johnny Walker. We're going to recap last week's UFC, UFC 266, go over the predictions and bets for that, and then um, we're going to get right into this UFC. So last week, UFC 266, my predictions, I went 9-3. and three. Um, I went 3-1 and one with my bets. And uh, one bet, the bet that I lost, the guy got exposed. I was hoping that wasn't going to happen. It did. said last week in the video there was a chance it could happen, and it did. So uh, the bets that I won last week were Alexander Volkanovsky. I put 3.2 units to win two units on him. Um, I thought that was a lock, and it was. It was a great fight. He beat him down the whole fight except that round three. Had me so nervous. I mean, that guillotine and the triangle were so tight that I, I, I thought it was done. I got off the couch, walked away, thought it was done, and he toughed it out. Uh, Volkanovski, he's so tough, so tough. Uh, he's going to be champ for a long time, I think. Um, second fight, second bet I had was Talia Santos and Jessica Andrade. I had three units to win 2.1 units on them. Um, that was a fairly easy win. Talia Santos beat down Roxanne Modafari the whole fight, all three rounds. Um, Jessica Andrade, she put a beating on Cynthia Calvillo, KO'd her in the first round, which was awesome. Uh, KO'd her with one second left before Herb Dean stepped in. And uh, the third the third bet I had was another two-fight parlay, which was Matt Semmelsberger and Chris Dawkins. And that, that was pretty easy money, too. Semmelsberger obviously won. First first, uh, first uh, punch he connected to the face. Put, put uh, uh, Nick Diaz's boy down. I can't even remember. It's Martin Sano. Put him down in the first round, first punch. So that was easy. And then Chris Dawkins, that was a little bit worrisome. I mean, he was getting countered a little bit in that first round until he landed that huge shot that uh, sent Shamil down. I thought it was over in the first round. I, I thought he was out cold. He somehow came back to, uh, took a beating until the end of the bell of the first round. Second round came out. Um, and Dawkins did the, excuse me, Dawkins did the same thing. Um, hit him with some big shots, knocked him out like two more times. Finally got the finish. That rounded out that last uh, parlay I had. And uh, that was three units to win 2.4. And the loss was Euros Medic. And man, I should have seen that coming. I even warned at the end of my last video that he could gas out and get exposed because he might mean he's fighting out of Alaska FC. And Jalen Turner's proven in the UFC. And he did exactly what he was supposed to do. I mean, he tore Euros Medic up. Um, I, feel, I feel dumb for that bet. But hey, we live and we learn. We'll figure it out. Uh, we'll know for his next fight. So that was the recap. I, I, I profited 4.7 units, which is pretty good. Um, like I said, the uh, smallest bet I had was Euros Medic, and that one didn't pay off. So um, we're going to get into this week's card. It is uh, UFC Fight Night Santos versus Walker. It's going to be a good, some good fights. That last fight is definitely going to be uh, fireworks. So we'll get into the first fight of the night, and that is Shanna Young versus Stephanie Edgar. Um, Ain't going to be the best fight ever. It's two, two women that, I mean, really aren't that good. I guess one of them is going to get a win here and be able to move on, try to do something. Uh, Shanna Young is 7-3. and three. She's plus 110. Um, she's got decent striking, um, as you've seen on the Contender Series. She's got decent wrestling. Um, okay, decent BJJ, I mean, for a girl. Uh, she looked good in her first two rounds against Sarah Alpar and then ended up getting choked out in the third round, taken down and choked out, which ain't a good look because Sarah Alpar has looked terrible in the UFC. Um, but she's not that bad. I mean, she's got decent striking. She struck with Macy Chase on for a little too long, but um, she still stood her ground, managed to go to a decision with her big height and reach disadvantage. Um, she's going to be fighting Stephanie Edgar who's 5-2. and two. She's minus 120 right now. Um, she's got a good ground game. Stephanie Edgar's got a good ground game, good judo, uh, good Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Um, she doesn't have the best striking ever at all. She really needs to improve that, but she's already getting a little older. Um, I really, uh, I don't know. I just, I really don't think that she's going to be able to get this fight to the ground that easy. And that's where the only way she really has a chance to win I, that I think Shanna Young has good wrestling. She showed it. She's, she's been able to take down Sarah Alpar, who's another wrestler. Um, yeah, I'm not going to spend too much time on this fight. I really do think Shanna Young will be able to stop the takedowns and uh, maybe even get some of her own. 
but uh, I don't think she'll want to. I think she'll keep it standing and win a boring decision. And um, I'm going to take Shanda Young by decision. Next fight is going to be Antonia Shevchenko versus Casey O'Neill. This should be a really good fight. Uh, it's fem female flyweight. All right, we got Antonia Shevchenko. She's uh, number 18 flyweight in the world. She's 9-3. and three. She's plus 180 right now. Uh, she's sister to Antonia Shevchenko, which is the main reason why I think she keeps getting chances in the UFC. Uh, Antonia has good kickboxing. She comes from a kickboxing background, kickboxing Muay Thai style. She's very tall, very lanky for the division. Um, she's got decent, decent takedowns. She's uh, very, very, very physically strong. She doesn't really use her takedowns. Um, she, she, uh, she's got good striking, good power. She's got terrible takedown defense. That's her problem, though. She's got terrible takedown defense, terrible get-up game. Um, she'll get taken down and just laid on, beat up. Andrea Lee really beat her up bad. I mean, Caitlin Chukagian took her down and beat her up bad. Um, and she's going to be fighting Casey O'Neill, who is 7-0. Uh, she's going to be minus 220 right now, and she is looking tough. Casey O'Neill, both fights that I've seen her fight, she's just a savage. I mean, she uh, she's very tough, very aggressive. Uh, she's got improving striking. It's it's not the best striking, but she's getting there. She can hold her own. She, she can take a shot, at least until she gets it to the ground, that's for sure. Um, she's got good takedowns. Good Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Uh, she's got great cardio. And like I said, she's just a savage. When she gets the fight to the ground and gets positioned, she's going to pound the girl out, look for submissions, all that. Uh, her last fight was against Laura Pro Propicio. And she's really tough. And uh, Casey O'Neill at first was getting pieced up a little bit on the feet and uh, wasn't looking very good. But once she got her to the ground, once, once they started grappling more, she uh, wore down on Laura Propicio and uh, ended up getting her out of there in the second round. And that was a really good fight. Uh, she showed that she's a savage. And she's going to be able to take down Antonio Shevchenko, I think, at will. And uh, beat her up. She might take a couple shots standing, but she's not going to get knocked out. Uh, she should be able to get this fight to the ground and um, do whatever she wants. So I'm going to be picking Casey O'Neill for a second round sub. Uh, I already got a bet in on her. I got uh, 3.25 units to win 1.25 units at minus 210. And I really do believe by the end of the week that um, she'll be up to maybe minus 275 favorite. So uh, it's a good time to get money in on her. All right. The third fight is going to be men's bantamweight. And it's going to be Alejandro Perez versus Johnny Eduardo. Uh, another like lower level fight. Uh, Johnny Eduardo, he's 45 or 41 years old. He's a Muay Thai specialist. Um, he has Muay Thai tattooed across his stomach. Um He's got some KO power. I mean, he he's he's definitely got some KO power. Uh, he's uh one inch. He's one inch taller. He's gonna have four inches of reach, which is a pretty decent size in one in the hundred thirty five pound division. But um, he's just old. He doesn't really have too much uh, Brazilian jiu jitsu. But I really don't think this fight's gonna go to the ground that much. I think it's gonna be a standing affair. And uh, he's fighting Alejandro Perez, who's twenty one eight and one. Um, he's minus 235. He's a big favorite right now. And uh, he's much younger. He's got uh, good boxing, good wrestling, trains out of AKA. Uh, he's been there for a long time. Dude's super tough. Um, I don't know. We got to see. He hasn't fought in about two years. He hasn't been in the in the cage since the last time he fought Yadong Song. And that didn't work out very well. Uh, he was knocked out cold, I believe, in the second round. But um, he's good. He, he's got good wrestle boxing, and, and he can keep the fight standing. Great takedown defense. Um, I think this fight's going to be good. Uh, I think that Alejandro Perez is younger. He's going to have more cardio. Um, I think Johnny Eduardo will be dangerous for the first round and a half. But as long as Alejandro Perez cannot, can stay away from getting knocked out in that first round, um, which I think he can, he can stay safe with his boxing, maybe even a little grappling. By the second, third, Eduardo should be gassing a little bit. And then I, I figure that uh, Alejandro Perez will take over. And I'm going to be taking him by decision. Fight number four is in the lightweight division. And this is going to be a good fight. We got Jamie Malarkey versus Devante Smith. And uh, this should be a great fight. Uh, Jamie Malarkey is 13-4. Uh, right now he's plus 130. Uh, Jamie, he's from Australia. He's big for the division. He's six foot tall, which is pretty big for a lightweight. 
Um, he's got decent, powerful striking. He's kind of slow, but he has good hooks. He's got kind of a fast right hand, uh, counter right. But uh, as you've seen what he did to Kama Worthy, he knocked him out with that uh, hook real quick. Um, he's got fast hands. He's got a little bit of powerful hands, but Kama Worthy has no chin whatsoever. Um, he's got good takedowns, like relentless takedowns. He'll keep going after him. He's got good Brazilian jiu-jitsu. If he can get you down, he can hold you down. Um, I don't know if he's going to get too many submissions or anything, but he can he can get off a little ground and pound and, and get some control time. Uh, he's very, very durable. I mean, the fight with Brad Riddell when they were just going back and forth, I mean, he was kind of getting his butt kicked the whole time, but he was still holding his own and took a lot of big shots, and Brad Riddell was a savage. So, I mean, I think he's going to be a top five guy here real soon. Um Guy's just tough, durable, great gas tank. Um, like I said, big for the division. He's gonna be fighting Devonta Smith, who's eleven and two right now. He's minus one fifty. Um, super fast. The guy's super fast. Has super good uh, striking, powerful striking. Good knockout power. Um, he's got decent takedowns, decent takedown defense. Um, he uh, he's gonna need that in this fight because he's gonna have to keep this standing. And uh, hopefully be able to land big shots on Malarkey. Um, Malarkey's going to try to wrestle him, wrestle him, wrestle him. And I think he's going to be able to get some takedowns. But I think Devontae Smith's get-up game will be good enough um, to get up, not take too much damage, and um, land the quicker, bigger, more powerful strikes. Because Devontae Smith's striking is awesome. Good speed, good accuracy, great power. I mean... I could really see him knocking out um, Malarkey in the first round, but Jamie Malarkey is just so tough that I think he'll be able to take them shots for a while. Um, could be a finish in the in the second or third, but I just think this is going to be a grinding, tough fight. And if uh, Devontae Smith comes in in shape like he, he should, like he usually does, um, I see him being able to grind out a decision, maybe even possibly getting the finish. But I'm, 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 I'm not going to bet this fight. I just think it's, I don't know, it's too... It's too much up in the air because if Devontae Smith's takedown game doesn't doesn't hold up, I mean he's gonna be in for a long night, excuse me, because Jamie Malarkey doesn't uh doesn't stop unless you put him out. And that's hard to do. So yeah, give me Devontae Smith by decision, possible knockout. Next fight. Fight number five is gonna be in the men's bantamweight division, and it's gonna be Douglas De Silva and Draj versus Gatino Perello. And uh, Douglas Andrade is 26 and 4. Uh, he's minus 250 right now. And um, he's a big, big, beefy little Brazilian guy. I mean, he's short, but he's stocky. Um, Douglas Andrade has great striking. He has uh, some KO power. He hits hard. He looks like he hits hard. Um, he's super durable. He has good takedown defense, good takedowns. Um, not that much, uh, good Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Once he gets people down, he doesn't really hold them down that long, but, um, still he does have good takedowns and, uh, I think he's going to have good enough takedowns in jiu-jitsu for, uh, Pirello. Uh, the guy's 26 and four. I mean, he's only lost to really like the best people. He's lost to, uh, Petra Jan, Rob Font. He just fought Laron Murphy at 145 and Laron Murphy's a savage. Oh yeah, this fight's at 135. So he's actually dropping back down to 135. Um, yeah, I think the dude's tough. He's getting a little older. He's 36 years old, but still, I mean, you can tell by the shape he's in. He's he's going to be in shape till he's 65 years old. Um, the guy's just naturally got good good DNA. So he's fighting Gaetano Perello, who's 15, 6, and 1. He's currently plus 205 right now. Um, he has good striking, good Muay Thai kickboxing. He's from Belgium. He's actually like kickboxing world champion. Um, <clears throat> he's got good power. He's got good good KOs um, in a bunch of different ways, but I mean his competition's terrible. Uh, he's fighting over in uh, Belgium, which I mean you know nobody comes out of Belgium really. His last his first fight in the UFC was on short notice. He came in and fought Ricky Simone, and I mean he looked terrible. Ricky Simone's a beast, but I mean he just looked terrible. I don't I don't think he looked like he was UFC caliber. Ricky Ramon, Ramon Ricky Simone took him down repeatedly, and um, then ended up choking him out in the second. Um, but yeah, the guy has terrible takedown defense. It looks like a terrible ground game because I think he's just more kickboxing. Um, so yeah, I'm going to take Douglas to Silva and Drage to get a third round KO. Actually, I think that he's going to mix in his striking. He hits hard. He's super durable. I think he's going to mix in his striking, mix in his wrestling a little bit, wear on, wear on Perillo. And, uh, by the third, third round, I think he's going to hit him with a big shot and end up getting a ground and pound finish. So I got him in a parlay. 
um, that I'll that I'll bring up as soon as that that rounds out when I get to that fight. Next fight is fight number six. It's gonna be Carol Rosa versus Beth Coera, and this is at women's bantamweight at one thirty five. Uh, Carol Rose is 14 and three. She's minus 340. Uh, she's a huge favorite. Um, she was the biggest favorite on the card till the Anthony Hernandez fight. But uh, yeah, um, Carol Rose is tough. She's 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 got good size for the division. She's got great striking volume as you've seen against Laura Propicio. Um, she's got a good ground game. She's got good BJJ. She's got good takedowns, good ground and pound. She's really got everything that you want from a from a female fighter. Um, everything I've seen from her is great. She beat Jocelyn Edwards, who's super athletic, uh, and she beat her over three rounds and kept grounding and pounding her, um, and uh, which I think is gonna is gonna help her in this fight. But uh, she's gonna be fighting Beth Coera, who's eleven five and one, and right now she is plus two seventy five, and I think that actually changed. I know I've seen one thing that had Kara Rosa at minus four fifty. So Beth Cohera could be anywhere up to like plus 350, plus 375 right now. Um, Beth Cohera has been in the UFC forever. She's fought the best of the best and lost to most of them. Uh, she's very slow and plodding. She's like short and thick. Um, she's slow and plodding. She's super tough. Um, she's basically only boxes though. She don't throw any leg kicks too much. She don't go for takedowns and, or nothing like that. She boxes, throws decent power. But uh, basically, the last like five fights I've seen her fight, she's just been a punching bag. Um, she retires every other fight. Uh, she was supposed to be retired after last fight, but she, she's coming back for this fight for some reason. Um, she's got a terrible gas tank. Like I said, uh, Carol Rosa is better than her at every every aspect of fighting, especially at this stage of their career. Um, I'm going to take Kara Rosa by decision. I wouldn't be surprised if she finishes her. Um, I don't really like to bet props like finishes and rounds and all that stuff. I, I'd rather just take somebody to win to get the best odds I can get. So, But uh, I will be taking Kara Rosa by decision. And she actually rounds out that parlay I was just talking about with Douglas D'Andrage Silva. Um, I have that, that parlay is uh, I got 2.5 units to win 2.1 units. So I'm glad I locked that in on Sunday because Rosa, I got her at minus 330. And like I said, I think she's minus 450 right now. And she's probably going to be minus 600 by the time the fight. She should be. I mean, I really, unless Beth Cohera hits her with some crazy shot out of nowhere, I, I don't understand. I don't see how she's going. All right. To the next fight. This is going to be a good fight too, I think. Um, we got fight number seven in the men's lightweight division. We got Joe Selecki versus Jared Gordon. Uh, Joe Selecki is 11 and two right now. He is minus 135, and uh, Jared Gordon is 17 to four, and he right now he is plus 105. So we got Joe Selecki, who I think is tough. I didn't really believe in him all that much at first. I mean, I mean, he had that good showing on the Contender series, but even said himself he wasn't ready for the UFC. But since he's came in the UFC, he's looked nothing but great. Had a win over Matt Wyman, um, a decision win over him. Uh, cost me some money because, like I said, I didn't believe in him when he fought Thud Hubbard, Austin Hubbard, and uh, he choked him out in the first round. I, I didn't think I thought Hubbard was going to win because he fought Davi Ramos, a, a lot of other people that are good with submissions, and they couldn't do nothing to him. So I figured that he'd definitely be able to uh, hold off Joe Selecki, and um, Joe Selecki tapped him out in the first round. And then uh, his last fights would really impress me too. He fought. Um, Jim Miller, who I'm, I'm, I love Jim Miller. Jim Miller's super tough. He's a little older now, but he's still, I mean, if, if you're not good, you're not going to beat Jim Miller because he's great at every part of the game. Um, and Joe Selecki dominated him pretty much for three rounds and um, wasn't no quick submission, no quick knockout. Like he beat Jim Miller for three rounds. And um, you've seen even with Jim Miller and Vince the Pichel, like Jim Miller's still tough, still can beat people. So uh, I was impressed by that. And, um, He's got good takedowns. Um, he can take the back quick, like you've seen with Austin Hubbard. Great Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Um, he's basically a lifelong, lifelong martial artist. Uh, he's been doing this since he was a kid, like seven years old. So uh, great jiu-jitsu, great control on the ground. Um, once once he gets you down, you're not getting up. Uh, he's going to be fighting Jared Gordon, who's 17-4. and four. He's plus 105. Uh Gordon's got a uh, good, decent striking, pressure striking. He likes to throw a lot of volume and pressure you. Um, he's got a uh, he's got good cardio. Uh, um, he definitely uh, 
he's got good takedowns. He's got good ground and pound. Uh, he's seen against Danny Chavez. But uh, he's fighting 145ers. He's been fighting at 145 for the last couple years and not even being able to make weight. Usually he comes in about 150, fights these dudes at 145 pounds and beats up some of them, gets beat by some. Um, the last three times that he's tried to go up to lightweight because he couldn't make uh, 145, he's been KO'd. And ja Jaquim Silva KO'd him in the third round. That was a good fight back and forth. Uh, then he fought, um, let's see, who else did he fight? Oh, he fought, I mean, Charles Oliveira KO'd him in the first round, which that's expected. And then he got KO'd by Diego Ferreira in the first round. So, I mean, anytime he tries to come up, he, I think he's like an in-between. I don't think he's big enough for 155, and he's too big for 145. So, um, and uh, he's going to be the smaller man in this fight again against Joe Selecki. Joe Selecki's got, I think they're about the same height. Um, Joe Selecki might be one inch taller, but Joe Selecki's got a little reach, and he's just an actually bigger guy. I mean, if you're hanging in there... With Austin Hubbard, which I think pretty much does the same thing that Jared, Jared Gordon does, except a little better. Like, but uh, yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be taking Joe Selecki for first or second round sub. I, I do think he's gonna finish. Um, I haven't went and betted him yet um, because uh, I'm gonna go to the casino and bet him. Uh, I think he. I hope he drops down to like he's minus one thirty five right now. I'm hoping he'll drop down to minus. 125 and then I'm gonna go put like 2.5 units. I really do think this is an easy money bet uh, Anytime they go to the ground, which is gonna go to the ground. He's gonna be a little bigger uh, Jared Gordon is gonna be in trouble, but this is gonna be a good fight. But like I said, I got Joe Selecki by sub Next fight is gonna be Alexander Hernandez versus Mike Breeden It was supposed to be Alexander Hernandez versus Leandro Santos, but Santos had to pull out um, this is definitely a nice, uh, way easier fight for, for uh, Alexander Hernandez. So uh, we got Alexander Hernandez, who's 12 and 4 and currently minus 500. Um, he's the number 20 lightweight in the world right now, which is pretty good. He's fought in great competition. He had when his first fight in the UFC, he had that crazy knockout of Benio Dariush in like under a minute, but uh, probably like under 20 seconds. Um, he beat Aubin Mercier. He's beating some good people. He's gotten beat. Um, he's still a young kid. Uh, he's got great striking, good foot movement, good uh, good power. Um, he's very, very, very explosive, like I said, with the Benio Darius fight and some other fights. He's got good KO power. He's got good wrestling, good ground game. Um, when he gets to use it, he's fought in some other decent wrestlers. I uh, try to Fought good BJJ guys like Tiago Moises last fight, so he didn't really try to use any any grappling. But he can be super low output at sometimes, like he was against uh, um, well a lot of the people he's fought really. Um, but uh, yeah, we, he's going to be fighting Mike Breeden, who's ten and three. He's coming in on short notice. Uh, don't know too much about him. I seen he does got some crazy knockouts. He, uh, he has a knockout over Brandon Jenkins, who just fought last week. Um, against uh, Ruzong. Mike Breeden, though, is 10-3. and three. He's got KO power. I've seen he had a body punch knockout. He's got a flying knee knockout, a regular, regular just punch knockout. So the guy the guy does a lot of different stuff. I mean, he can he can end you in any way. Um, right now, he's, though, he's on topology. He's the number three lightweight in Missouri. So, I mean, that's tough. That's, that's crazy to go from that competition, the regional scene, and just being the third best lightweight in Missouri to fighting the 20th best lightweight in the whole world. On short notice, on like maybe what, a week notice. So, uh, yeah, he trains out of Glory MMA, though. He's under James Krause, so I'm sure he's going to have good cornering. I mean, I'm sure he's, he's going to be good. I just don't think he's going to be ready for this. Maybe in a couple of years he'll keep fighting the UFC if we win one after this. But, yeah, I just don't see him winning this. I got Aaron Hernandez uh, at first-round KO. I think he's just he's just too explosive. Um He's got too much KO power for breeding. So, yeah, I'm going to take uh, Alexander Hernandez by first round KO. I'm not betting it, though, too much. Okay, uh, next fight's going to be a really good fight. We have uh, in the men's welterweight division, we have Nico Price versus Alex Oliveira. Uh, Nico Price is 14 and 5, and he is minus 140. Uh, Nico is gr has great KO power. Awkward striking. Uh, I love Nico to be honest. I mean, he's an all-out fighter um, Every single fight he's in is all action. You you can't watch one of his fights and it not be good either way win lose or draw 
So uh, he's got a decent BJJ. He doesn't have the best takedowns or takedown defense, but when he's on the ground, he's good. He's got power striking from the ground. I've seen him knock out Randy Brown uh, with a hammer fist from the ground. He knocked out, uh, uh, what's the tall guy's name that just retired? James Vick knocked him out from the, from the ground, from his back. Um, he's got great cardio. Uh, he's just a crazy fighter, and he's pretty good everywhere. I mean, he's he's got good crazy KO power standing, good crazy KO power on the ground, good cardio. Leaves himself open to be hit. He's definitely very hittable. It's cost him in some of his fights, but um, he's gonna be fighting Alex Oliveira, who's twenty two ten and one, and uh, he's gonna be plus one twenty right now. Nico Price is minus one fifty. I don't know if I said one forty, but he's minus one fifty now. Um, Alex Oliveira, he's also got KO power. He's got he's got good decent takedowns, good good Brazilian jiu jitsu. Um, he's got good striking, good good like front front kicks, heat kicks, all that stuff. But um, he's very dangerous for that first round. But after that, I mean, he's just been looking terrible. And to be honest, he hasn't even been looking great in the first round recently. Um, I feel like he's just been fighting for money to feed all his kids because he has not looked like the old cowboy. Uh, he he just um, against Kajmat. Rachman, Rachmahov, Kajmat, or whatever his name is. I mean, he got handled. And then his last, he got handled and choked out. And then his last fight against Randy Brown. Randy Brown, like, embarrassed him. Just walked him down, beat him up, and then choked him out. I just don't think he has any fight left in him. Like, he used to have a ton of fight in him, but I think he's been beat out. Um, I think these guys are going to go to war that first round. And, and the first round is going to be dangerous uh, because Nico's so sloppy. He could get clipped. Um, and taken out, I doubt it. He's not going to get submitted. So I think the first round is going to be crazy. They're both crazy warriors. But by the second round, middle of the second, Oliveira is going to start gassing. And uh, that's when I think Nico, Nico Price is going to take over. And um, I feel like he's going he's gonna to get a third round finish. Um, he almost finished Michelle Pierre in the third round last fight. Michelle Pierre is tough, man. I mean, he took a beating in them first two rounds and came back towards the end of the second and then beat him up in the third. So excuse me, with that kind of warrior mentality and that, that fight he's got in him, Cowboy don't have that fight in him no more. So I'm going to go ahead and take Nico Price by a uh, third round TKO. And uh, I actually have a hundred, I have a, a 1.5 unit bet on that to win one unit. And um, I might put more, I don't know. I think the line's going to get it. I think that people are going to bet on Nico Price. And it's I, it was at 130 on Sunday morning and now it's already up to minus 150. So I think it's going to, be up to maybe like minus 175, 180 by fight time. Uh, next fight is going to be a good one. It's in the men's middleweight division, 185. We got Mika Serkinov versus Christoph Jocko. Um, Misha Serkinov is 15 and 6, and right now he's plus 130. Uh, Misha Serkinov is tough. He's coming down from 205. Uh, he had a decent run there. I mean, he just fought a lot of big guys. His last fight was against Ryan Spann, who's six foot five and just a giant dude. So, I mean, he's been fighting some big, big guys and great guys. Very, very, uh, very good ranked guys. And he's beaten some of them. I mean, he, he, he choked out Jimmy Crew. Uh, Misha Serkinov's got good takedowns. He's got great Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I mean, he's a black belt high level, taps out other black belts. Um, he's got good, powerful striking when standing. He, he uses that a lot to get into get into the clinch, get into grappling, get his takedowns going. And uh, if he can get you to the ground, I mean, especially in that first round, first to the middle of the second round, I mean, he he's definitely can snatch something. He's big. He's he's dropping down to middleweight. This is his first fight at middleweight, and he's big. He's six foot three. So to see him down at middleweight, he, he might be in even better shape and everything, have more cardio than he's used to having. There's one thing. I don't think Nisha Serkinov has much heart. I've seen him quit a couple times, and uh, I don't like that. But, I mean, that's against, like, big, crazy fighters. Like I said, maybe, like, against, like, Ryan Spann and uh, Glover Texera. Just a lot of good fighters that, um, I mean, they would spark off Christo Christoph Jocko. So, uh He's, like I said, he's going to be bigger at 6'3". And um, he's fighting Christoph Jocko, who's 22-5. and five, And right now he's minus 160. Uh, Christoph Jocko, he's got good striking, a good footwork. Um, he's got great, good to great takedown defense. Um, I mean, I haven't seen him get taken down too much. Definitely not taken down, controlled, and all that. But uh, he hasn't fought the highest level of competition either. Um, he's got good to great cardio. Uh, he doesn't have much power, though. He's like a decision machine. He's got decent wins over, like, Eric Anders. Um, 
But uh, I, I, he got beat up by Sean, Sean Strickland, but he's a beast. He's, he's going to be beating up a lot of people. Um, I like Christoph Jocko. He's boring. He's safe, though. I mean, he's good. Uh, but in this fight right here, he's the favorite. And I just I, I, I just got to bet on Chris, uh, Mishav Serkinov. I really think Mishav Sir, Misha Serkinov coming in, being the bigger guy. Um, I think he's going to be able to get his takedowns for sure on Jocko. And I, I just think he's going to get the neck. He's going to grab something. I mean, if he, if he was able to uh, roll around with Jimmy Crew and beat Jimmy Crew, I got to think that he's going to be... Um, Christoph Jocko. I mean, he's like I said, he's going to have like three inches of height on him. He's just going to be the bigger man, especially if he can swell back up to like 215, 220, like he fought when he was at 205. Um, like I said, I hope he has good cardio, but I'm going to be taking Misha Serkinov by first round sub. Uh, I don't think I'm going to I'm going to bet on him. Uh, Friday when I do see the weigh-ins, if Serkinov looks great, makes weight easily and all that, I might go put another bet in him um, if he's still a dog. I don't know. I think that he could be going into... To, Maybe where Christoph Jocko is only minus like 130, 140 uh, by the time the fight comes. So we'll see. We'll see the weigh-ins on that. Next fight is going to be a good one. We got uh, Aspen Ladd versus Macy Chazon in the women's bantamweight division. Uh, Aspen Ladd, she's 9-1. and one. She's minus 210 right now. Uh, she's... She's been off for 20 months. She had ACL surgery, and I think she hurt her other knee or the same one, but she's had two knee, injured her knee twice, and has been off the last 18 months. Um, if she comes back and is as good as she's been, she's she's a great fighter. I mean, she's got great striking. She's got great cardio. She's got good takedowns. She's got decent power standing. She's got great ground and power. She goes into, like, savage mode, starts screaming, throwing her crazy shots like she does. Um, I really like Aspen Ladd, but like I said, uh, Coming off these injuries, the long layoff, it's going to be tough. I want to see how uh, how she does. She's going to be fighting Macy Chason, who's 7-1. and one. Uh, She's plus 165 right now. Macy Chason is huge for the division. She's 5'11". She used to fight at 145. Now she's down at 135. Um, she's pretty good. She's got good striking, uses her range, um, hits pretty hard. She, she got, she's got decent volume. Um She's got decent takedown defense, decent takedowns of her own, but if she gets taken down, she has trouble getting up. She's been controlled in a couple of her fights that she had. Marie Renault controlled her for a while. I think she had like three, four minutes of control time on her. So that's tough. When, she, when she's fighting Aspen Ladd, who's got great, great, great ground game. She's got good takedowns. Um, I, this is going to be a tough fight. I really think Macy Chason has a lot of ways to win, has a lot of ways to stay in this fight. If she can keep it on the feet, I think she'll be able to piece up uh, Aspen Ladd. Uh, Anna Kunitskova was was taken into Aspen Ladd for the first two rounds in their fight, I thought. And then Aspen Ladd hit her with that big shot and ended up uh, pounding her out in the third. So Aspen Ladd's striking is decent. I think Macy Chason has better striking for sure, especially with her length, height. But... um. Aspen Ladd has good wrestling and, and good ground game, so I think she's going to be able to get Macy Chase on down, at least in the first or second round. She should get a lot of control time, win them two rounds. And then in the third round, uh, Macy Chase on could, could take that round, you know, if, if, if uh, Aspen Ladd can't get her down, but I just don't think she's going to finish Aspen Ladd. So I'm going to go ahead and take Aspen Ladd by decision, and um, I'm not going to be betting that fight because I do think Macy Chase on does have chances to win that fight. All right, next fight is the co-main event. It's going to be a men's middleweight division at 185, and we got Kevin Holland versus Kyle Dawkins. And this is going to be a great fight. This is going to be a, such a great fight. We'll find out some stuff about both these guys. They're both good prospects. Well, Kevin's kind of a veteran. But all right, so we got Kevin Holland, who's 21-7. and seven. He's currently sitting at minus 155. Uh, he's got great striking, uses length, great uh, He's got fast hands, long reach, and KO power. You've seen against like Yoquan Buckley, a couple other people he's knocked out. Um, he's got decent BJJ. He's got no wrestling. He's got no takedown defense. And he's got a questionable gas, a questionable gas tank. Um, I've seen him in a lot of fights where I didn't, I didn't even think, I mean, I think he's he's got two, three more wins than he should even have uh, against uh was it Darren Stewart? Darren Stewart won that fight, did way more damage, had way more control time. Um, 
I thought Darren Stewart won that fight. And if you want to go all the way back to maybe what, like four years ago with Gerard Mershart, three, four years ago, Gerard Mershart won that fight too. Actually, I had a bet in on Kevin Holland and I thought Mershart won that fight and was happy to get that money, but they messed up. The judges messed up on that fight. So Kevin Holland could possibly be 19 and nine. Um, like I said, terrible takedown defense, terrible get up game and questionable gas tank. I mean, I've seen him gas out in a couple of fights. So he's going to be fighting Kyle Dawkins, who's 10 and two younger brother of, uh, Chris Dawkins, who just fought last weekend. Uh, so he's 10 and two right now. He's going to be sitting at plus 125. Um, Kyle Dawkins is good, man. He's good everywhere. He's got good striking. He's got good pace and cardio. Uh, he's got great Brazilian jiu-jitsu. He's got good takedowns. He landed three takedowns on Brandon Allen. Um, that was a great fight. Them guys went life and death for three rounds. Excellent fight. And we see what Brandon Allen did to Kevin Holland. Choked him out cold in the second round. Which, that was a good fight up till then, too. But, uh, yeah, Kyle Dawkins, though, um, he, he's, he got, he's good. He's got good takedowns, decent takedowns. Good enough, I think, for uh, Kevin Holland. He's got good stand up enough to not not get sparked, I don't think. So, um, yeah, I think this is going to be a great fight. I think Kevin Holland's going to talk a lot of shit. But in the end, man, I really do think Kyle Dawkins is going to get the decision. He could even get a third round stoppage, I think, when uh, Kevin Holland slows down a little bit. As long as he plays it good, gets gets some takedowns, get get wears on Kevin Holland, gets some control time in them first and second round, plays it, keeps it safe, you know, doesn't get knocked out. I don't I don't see why he wouldn't get a third round finish or at least the the, the unanimous decision because um, anytime he, I mean, he's got like good ground and pound. He's got good reversals. He's a big guy too. Kevin, Kevin Holland's usually a lot bigger than these other guys. Taller, he's 6'3", he's real long. But uh, Kyle Dawkins, I think 6'2". He's, he's tall, he's long. Um, I got Kyle Dawkins winning this. Like I said, uh, third round, third round stoppage or a uh, decision. I haven't bet this fight either. Uh, I'll go over all my bets that I have so far at the end of this video. And now we're on to the main event. It's going to be a good fight, man, for as long as it lasts. Uh, we have Thiago Santos versus Johnny Walker, Battle of the Brazilians. Um, 205, they're, they're, they're weighing in men's lightweight division. We got uh, Thiago Santos, number seven light heavyweight in the world. Uh, he's 21 and nine. Uh, he's uh, currently, right now, he's sitting at minus 170. Tiago Santos is tough. Um, he's got great Muay Thai, great powerful striking, great leg kicks, uh, great hooks, great elbows, great knees. He, he's he's uh, very athletic. Well, he used to be when he was a little younger. I mean, when he had both his knees and all that. Um, he's getting old, man. Uh, he just had, he had both of his knees repaired after that John Jones fight. And I believe that was about like two, three years ago. And he's 35. He's 37 now. And... Um, I just don't think he's the same explosive Tiago Santos that he used to be. I mean, he's still great. You've seen his last fight against Alexander Ratchik that he's still great. He's still tough. He's going to fight to the end. But, um, yeah, he's just he's just getting old and his body's breaking down and, and uh, it's, it's wearing out on him. He's going to be fighting Johnny Walker, who's 18-5, and five, currently right now sitting at plus 140. Uh, Johnny Walker's uh, a big dude for 205. He's six foot six. Um, dude's very athletic, man. He's crazy athletic. He can do flying knees, spinning elbows, elbows from anywhere. He's, he's very crazy. Very crazy. Um, all of his fights are crazy. If you watch the last fight with Ryan Spann, he got Spann hurt right at the beginning. Um, real quick, went in for the kill. He's got a kind of bad fight IQ, but, uh, went in for the kill, got stung by Ryan Spann. Ended up going back and forth, back and forth in a crazy first round. And then right at the end, Ryan Spann goes to shoot in for a takedown against Fence, just like he did against Carl Robertson in uh, the Contender Series. And he just hit him with, Johnny Walker just hit him with them elbows and put him to sleep. But as we're seeing, Ryan Spann's got a glass jaw. So, But uh, yeah, Johnny Walker's going to be younger. He's going to be bigger. Like I said, six foot six, more explosive. Um, this is going to be a great fight. Uh, I got Johnny Walker winning by first round KO. I think he's going to hit him with something big. I think it's going to go back and forth. Because um, a good way to beat Johnny Walker is grappling with him, trying to take some of his energy and explosiveness away. And I just don't see Tiago Santos trying to take him down or grapple him at all, really. I think this is going to be a stand-up war. Um, 
I got, like I said, I got Johnny Walker by first round KO. Now, if it gets into this five round fight, so if it gets into that third, fourth round, of course, Walker seems, I don't think he has the best, best gas tank in the world, but I don't see how this fight can get to the third or fourth round. Both, both these dudes are savages and killers, and um, they both finish and get finished. So, uh, I'd, like I said, I like Johnny Walker, first round KO. I'm going to see what the odds look like. Uh, I'm going to go into the casino and put a bet in on, on um, him and Joe Selecki, and I'm going to put it in another parlay. But, uh, yeah, that's going to wrap up this event. I got Johnny Walker, my first round KO. Um, the bets that I have in as of right now, uh, I have Casey O'Neal, uh, 3.6 units to win 1.55 units. I have Joe, or I have Nico Price, uh, 1.5 units to win one unit. And the parlay I have in so far is Carl Rosa, um, and Jessica, or Douglas De Silva and Draj. Uh, 2.5 units to win 2.1 units. Um, like I said, this is going to be a good card. Uh, thanks for watching my breakdown video again. I hope you guys like it. I hope you like and subscribe. hope we can win money again. And um, I had a good week last week and the week before. Uh, I post all my, my uh, bets, uh, all my tickets on Instagram, uh, Blood Money MMA Bets there too. So if you want to go check that out. But uh, thanks for watching again. And um, I'll be back next week and uh, do another great video. Let's win some money. Let's beat the bookies. Thanks, guys. Later.